Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our online service this Sunday, the 22nd of September. It's wonderful to be with you. I do hope you've had a wonderful morning getting up to whatever you have got up to so far, whether you're still in bed with a cup of tea, whether you've been out and about and are catching up a bit later on, or whether you are uh, not feeling very well today and are stuck at home. I do hope that you are enjoying whatever has gone on today. We have our slightly shortened, slightly uh, uh, lighter online service, a few things cut out, but we still pray, we still worship, and we still uh, dig into the Bible. So we'll begin by saying our opening acclamation and then moving on to our first hymn together this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's sing together. that speak of sacrifice, hands that flung stars into space, to cruel nails surrender. This is our God, the servant's King. He calls us now.
A wonderful Graham Kendrick song there. Great to be able to worship the God who comes as a servant. Not to be served, but to serve. Reminding us of our call to also be servants to one another. We now move on to our Bible reading, which is from James chapter 3, verses 13 to chapter 4, verse 8. Here we go. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbour bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. For wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous, adulterous people don't know that friendship with the world means enmity with God. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace? This is why scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favour to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our text today in James chapter 3 and 4 presents us with a sobering question. What kind of wisdom governs your life? This passage draws a stark contrast between two types of wisdom, one earthly and unspiritual, marked by envy and selfish ambition, and the other heavenly, leading to peace, mercy and righteousness. James is essentially asking us to reflect on the posture of our hearts and directions of our lives. Are we drawing close to God or are we being pulled away by worldly desires? This question is vital for every follower of Jesus because the kind of wisdom we live by determines the depth of our relationship with God. It shapes whether we live in alignment with his will or whether we're driven by our own selfish ambitions. And so we'll explore this call to draw close by God, draw close to God by diving into James's warning about earthly wisdom and his invitation to pursue wisdom from above. James begins with a rhetorical question. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Immediately, James sets the tone. True wisdom is revealed not by knowledge or eloquence, but by humility, actions and character. But in verses 14 to 16, James paints a troubling picture of what he calls earthly wisdom. He warns that this kind of wisdom is often rooted in bitter envy and selfish ambition leading to disorder and evil practices. This isn't wisdom that draws us close to God, it's wisdom that pulls us away, causing chaos in both inner life and in our relationships. Think about the story of Cain and Abel. Cain, consumed by envy, allowed earthly wisdom to govern his actions. Instead of drawing close to God in humility and repentance, he let bitterness take over and lead, leading to his brother's murder. Cain's wisdom was self-centred, driven by comparison and jealousy. When he allowed that envy to fester, it led to destructive consequences, not only for his relationship with his brother, but also his relationship with God. Cain's tragic story serves as a timeless warning about the dangers of letting earthly wisdom take root in our hearts. We live in a world steeped in the wisdom of self-promotion and comparison. Social media platforms are filled with people curating the best versions of themselves, often leading others to feel inadequate or envious. This culture feeds the same selfish ambition and bitter envy that James warns against. We may find ourselves constantly striving for more, more recognition, more success, more approval, and yet the more we pursue these things, the emptier we feel. Isn't this the very nature of earthly wisdom? It promises satisfaction but leaves us in chaos and disorder, restless and disconnected from God. 
Drawing close to God requires us to resist this temptation, to let go of selfish ambition and to seek his approval above all else. In contrast to the chaos of earthly wisdom, James describes heavenly wisdom as pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Verse 17. These qualities reflect the character of God and invite us into a life that mirrors his heart. Heavenly wisdom produces peace rather than disorder, humility instead of pride and mercy over judgment. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, gives us a vivid picture of heavenly wisdom and the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This is the kind of wisdom that draws us close to God, one that prioritises purity, peace and righteousness. It's a wisdom that doesn't seek its own gain, but rather seeks to reflect the kingdom of God on earth. We're called to live in such a way that our lives are marked by this heavenly wisdom. But how do we get there? How do we uproot the envy and selfish ambition in our hearts and instead cultivate humility, mercy and peace? In James chapter 4, in chapter 4, James gets even more direct. He asks, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Our external conflicts are often a reflection of the internal battles we face, the tug of war between our selfish desires and the Spirit of God working in us. But James's solution is simple but profound. Submit yourselves to God. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Submission is the first step in drawing close to God. It requires humility, a willingness to lay down our pride and a posture of surrender. When we submit to God, we align our hearts with his will, allowing his wisdom to guide our lives. The parable of the prodigal son provides a beautiful picture of this act of submission. The younger son, after pursuing earthly wisdom in the form of selfish desires and reckless living, reaches a point of deep emptiness. In humility, he decides to return to his father, not expecting anything, but willing to be a servant. Yet, as he draws near, the father runs to meet him, embracing him with love and restoring him to his place in the family. This is the heart of God. When we come near to him in repentance and humility, he draws near to us with grace and mercy. And so James leads us with a clear call. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The wisdom of the world promising quick success, self-gratification and power, but leaves us empty, disconnected and far from God. The wisdom from above, however, calls us to humility, peace and mercy. To draw near to God, knowing that as we do, he draws near to us. And so today, God extends an invitation to you. Wherever you are in your journey, whether you're wrestling with envy and selfish ambition or striving to be a peacemaker in a divided world, the call is the same. Come near to God. It's in his presence that you'll find true wisdom, peace for your soul and renewed purpose for your life. May we resist the pull of the world and submit ourselves fully to God, trusting that as, he draw, as we draw near, he will draw near to us with grace, mercy and love. Amen. So we pray together using the words of the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so a few notices as we draw towards the end of our service. This coming Friday, is we're having uh, the Macmillan coffee morning uh, at that Friday feeling so do join us for that on Tuesday this week it is the second of our Romans Bible study don't worry if you've missed the first you can still come along it's at 10:15 in the March room and then on Saturday it is our tabletop sale we would love for you to come and join us at that in the afternoon from three till five for now then let's worship together
chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the life, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been wonderful to be able to worship you with you. I do hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, whatever you are doing. Don't forget, you can join us again next week. Bye for now.